Hello and welcome back to Tingwinger 5. Today we're stepping back into crowdfunded and we're taking a look at Everpolar, the world's first personal air conditioner. It raised over $1 million and it's over 250% of its original goal. Now the idea of this is a personal air conditioner. So it's something that's going to keep you cool in a more localised environment than a typical air conditioner. And the idea is it costs a lot less. So your air cooler sits over there. Whereas you could have lots of Everpolars dotted around the office or your room using a lot less power than one typical air cooler. And you can see it costs a lot less. The way they're achieving this is with an Eva Breeze material. Now, the way this works is an evaporative cooler. So what it does is it has its Eva Breeze material, which it soaks in water and then pushes air through it. Now, its cooling power is from 350 to 1200 British thermal units per hour, which is actually pretty impressive for something this size. Then, moving on down through the campaign, you can see in September 2015, their Indiegogo campaign was successful, and I received mine in July, so I apologise for the delay in posting this video. So let's get right into it and take a look at Everpolar. So it comes in a nice cardboard box. It's good because it's actually got product packaging, which a lot of these crowdfunding campaigns forget about. Now, it claims it creates a truly comfortable personal work environment, and I think its biggest selling point is that it only uses 10 watts and some water. Uh, for me, that's probably the biggest selling point they should go for. Uh, opening the box, which is actually quite large compared to the actual product, uh, so I'm just going to tip it upside down for you and watch it come out the bottom like so. And we have the actual unit, which uh, from the pictures I thought it would be a bit smaller than this if I'm honest, uh, but it is fairly large, powered by a micro USB, so you could use your normal phone charger, comes with obviously a guide for it, and a quick note from Eugene, the CEO at Everpolar. And the last thing in the box is the quick start guide before the actual cooler itself. So setting this cooler up is actually really, really easy. You take the tank out, you fill it with water, you put the tank back, and then you turn it on and you spin the dial on the top. So let's have a look at the actual device. So get rid of this cardboard and we can see it's in two separate areas. We have this area on the left with the vents and the area on the, or now the area on the left with the tank. Uh, so if we take off the plastic covering the screen, it is a screen, not a touch screen, it's just a screen, but it has a iPod-like dial all the way around it. So I'm having a look over it at the moment, trying to find out exactly what's happening, and we have the dial which spins around on the top like an iPad, and you can press the screen like a button. So let's review the quick start guide one more time to take you through how to take the tank out, and we'll understand how it works. So the tank itself just actually lifts out of the actual box. There's nothing to it, you just push from the side upwards. It's on a guide rail to keep it all in place, and on the bottom it has a spout to make sure it doesn't spray water everywhere. So fill up the tank with some water, and then it will guide right back in, just be a little bit more gentle, but guide it all the way from the top, and make sure it's completely in place. It will click when the actual tank is locked in place. We'll then take the micro USB cable, which came along with it, uh, which is actually fairly long, so it's actually uh, a decentish cable, and it plugs into the actual space under the vent here. So there is a micro USB port there, and you can actually use any phone charge you want. You'll notice it didn't come with a plug, because they expect you to have a phone charger. But in fairness, you could also power this from any USB 2 or USB 3, or even a USB 3.1 port, as it will pull the correct current from the port to make itself work. So now I've turned it on, let's have a look at the actual interface on the top. So this is on top of the Everpolar. I've kept the microphone on so we can hear what it sounds like. It's actually not that loud at all. It's not amazingly quiet, but it's not amazingly loud either. And these are all the settings that we've got. So you can go from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You can adjust the brightness of this screen and the actual colours on the outside. And you can then change the colour, put it into night mode, which is actually a very useful feature if you want to run it overnight. Change the colour that it displays on the tank itself by spinning it around. This plays in with the brightness setting that we've seen before, which is just here. So you can make it bright and change the colour out throughout it. And we go to the final setting we're going to have a look at, which is how much water it takes. So we set it to on and we can choose that it takes the maximum amount of water or we can actually take it down from there. And go for obviously from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So I'm running currently from 77.2 in my room at the moment to 67.6. .6. Now looking at this thing in thermal, you can check out my second channel, Life in Thermal, to discover how cold it actually gets. This is a thermal video, some thermography, and it actually cools the air pretty well, I've got to say. 
So being a device that moves air around, what we've got to do now is understand how to change the filter, which is actually a fairly easy process. So first we're going to take out the tank, and then exactly how you took the tank out, what you're going to do is take this plastic bit off. Now getting it out from in the middle was more difficult, and obviously you want to do this when the device is completely empty of water and you haven't used it for a little while. And you can see in the middle here that there's this block, and this is the actual air filter or evaporative filter. And what happens is the water goes into the bottom of the device and these little tabs here absorb the water and take it to the top. So when the air gets pushed through this like a spongy material, so you can see where the tabs fit down there, the air goes through, collects the water, evaporates, humidifies your air as well as cooling it all the way down. Now evaporative cooling is nothing new but it's something used in like data centers all over the world no matter if you know a really hot country or a really cold country. And that's it, there's nothing much more to this. There's a bit of a control circuit for how much water it takes and the fan control. So you can see the ribbon cable on the left there. But other than that, it's actually a fairly simple device and I'm majorly impressed with how well they've done. Uh, this is a proper crowdfunded device. I would consider their campaign a large success. Putting the device back together now, get the filter in is nice and easy. Just make sure you get the filter in all the way. Uh, and the actual way to do this is to put it in a little bit further than it should go and make sure that all the tabs are inside. And then you can just put the device back together nice and easy. Got guide rails to guide it down. Hit it on the top and then you can put your tank back on and it's ready to use it again. So Everpolar, you've done very well. You've delivered a product that's ready for market. It's got product packaging and it delivers on its promise. So I can't argue. Thank you for your work, Everpolar, and thank you for all for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.